if one poses the question what is rationality what is reason or what is uh, rationality as the, the the broader capacity i would uh, certainly answer that uh, in a sense rationality is related with the structure of thinking and with the way in which information is organized by the human mind and i would also dare to argue that rationality can be defined as the process of uh, thinking in which the number of presuppositions is taken to a minimum, in which the number of presuppositions is minimized in order to achieve the most efficient possible use of information. Uh, in a non-rational explanation, we face a huge number of assumptions or presuppositions which are not justified. In a rational explanation, we have the minimum sufficient and necessary number of presuppositions to justify the information that we want to assimilate. This is, I think, my view on rationality. I will try to explain it further later. Regarding logic, I very much agree with uh, the famous uh, French logician of the 17th century, Antoine Arnaud, who said that logic is l'art du pensée, the art of thinking. Uh, logic can be defined as the study of the general rules of thinking, the form of thinking. Uh, as everyone knows, in logic we uh, have to pay attention to at least two classes of uh, objects, of elements, the premises and the rules of inference. And in logic we are interested in the formalization of thinking without paying attention to the content of thinking. This is so at least since uh, Aristotle's pioneering work on this topic. It is clear that human rationality is channeled through logic, that is to say, through a set of rules of inference that keep a relation of logical consequence between the premises and the conclusions. And as uh, Aristotle already uh, realized, there are always some fundamental premises which are the starting rules for the process of thinking, for the intellect. And those two fundamental principles, one could argue if there are more, but at least two, are the principles of identity and the principle of non-contradiction. Principle of identity and principle of non-contradiction. In a sense, in logic, we study those rules that allow us to create consistent conceptual systems, or systems in which the concepts are constructed in a consistent way, that is to say, free from internal contradictions. What about intuition? Uh, I don't think it is, there is much to debate if uh, I uh, say that uh, intuition is the gate to creativity, because intuition is necessary for imagination. Intuition allows us to, permits us to think beyond what has already been proven but obviously, reason and logic are not opposed to intuition. Reason and logic help us formalize that which intuition discovers to make it subject to rules, to formalize it. Any discovery of intuition needs to be translated into propositions. We need to communicate, and for communication we need propositions. And it is clear that the way in which the human mind is built, these propositions have to be expressed free of contradiction. We have to design a conceptual system which is consistent. Thus, reason and logic, instead of precluding creativity, actually foster creativity. Because it is a combination of intuition and logic, of intuition and rationality, what allows us not only to think of the new, but to formalize the new in a useful way for the rest of the human beings, such that instead of staying in our subjectivity, in our own mind, can actually reach other minds. In any case, it is clear that intuition and logic are both instruments rather than goals. The goal is to create new systems, is to develop imagination, is to explain the world, and to create new worlds through imagination, through art, even through uh, society, through culture. But reason and logic are instruments 
in the search of consistent languages that allow us to formalize these intuitions. Uh, if we use an analogy taken from uh, the theory of evolution, as uh, everyone knows, uh, the key element of uh, Darwin's explanation of how um, the evolutionary process takes place uh, requires at least two elements. One which is uh, variation, genetic variation in the case of biological evolution, and another one which is natural selection that filters these variations. In a sense, we could apply this uh, form, this uh, scheme, this paradigm, to uh, the nature of the creative process. Because in the creative process, we are always before two elements, at least. Imagination and reason. I will take reason and logic as essentially uh, synonyms in this, in this case, without further uh, qualification. Imagination can be uh, contemplated as the uncontrolled element. Because just like uh, genetic variations, it is very difficult to find an algorithm for uh, what results, what outcomes of imagination will emerge. Sometimes it is ruled by unconscious elements. This was already uh, pointed by, by Freud. And uh, there are many examples, for instance, how uh, Kekulé discovered the structure of benzene in, in chemistry. And uh, many great scientists and even many great poets as well have uh, confessed that um, some of their greatest ideas came in an unconscious way, without thinking of it consciously. But it is clear that imagination, this beautiful force which cannot be controlled by reason or which cannot be reduced to an algorithm, needs to be formalized, needs to be rationalized. Otherwise, we could have some imaginative products which are useless, which do not generate any value for society. Reason plays the role of natural selection. Reason is the selective factor. So we have this variation plus selection, whose combination is an extremely powerful driver for the generation of new ideas for creativity. In any case, variability, I should qualify my previous statement, because I don't think that that variability is purely random. The variability of imagination, the way in which we combine different elements, we produce analogies, we connect ideas sometimes in unforeseen ways, is also the result of previous knowledge, memory, experience, careful thinking, attention, and in a sense it is not purely random, it is not a product of magic, so to speak. There is a history behind the way in which we imagine, so that in order to foster creativity, the first element is to think of, a to of the topic that we, are, that we are analyzing. It is necessary to have some previous work on it, otherwise ideas are not going to come out. And it is obvious in any case that in this variability, in these expressions of imagination, we aim to look for new consistent ways of integrating information. Normally in a creative process we are not discovering new pieces of information. There are some cases in which obviously this is, this is the situation, we discover new pieces of information, but in some of the most outstanding um, manifestations of human creativity, I'm thinking for instance of the theory of special relativity, Einstein did not have to discover new information. He recombined the information that was there in Newton's mechanic, in Maxwell's electromagnetism, in Lorentz's work, and so on. So, sometimes the, the expression of creativity consists of looking of identifying a new consistent language in which the previous information can be organized in a more efficient way, meaning by more efficient, the possibility of explaining more things or of broadening the mind to more scenarios. And um, after this brief uh, presentation, I just want to pose some questions that may foster the debate that you are having in Dubrovnik. At least they are questions that are useful for me and for the work I do in philosophy. The first question would be, what can neuroscientific research add to our understanding of creativity? How can it enhance 
not only our comprehension of creativity, but even the possibility of guessing how the mind creates new ideas, so that creativity does not remain the privilege of a few enlightened minds. This would be the first question. And the second question, given that imagination and intuition are not strictly random, they normally operate on some raw materials, on some previous processes, they combine some elements in various ways, but the elements are already there. Which contexts foster creativity and which contexts impede, obscure imagination, creativity and the rational use of imagination, the rationalization of imagination? So, in a sense, what can the social sciences teach us about what are the the environments and the contexts in which the mental processes that underlie creativity are enhanced or are, um, in a sense, diminished. And the final question I would pose on this topic is the following. Does a more predictable knowledge of creativity diminish its novelty, its wonder? Will human creativity always stand as a permanent challenge for rationality, as the avant-garde, so to speak, of our intellectual forces? Will it ever be replicated? If by creativity we are understanding not uh, creatio ex nihilo, uh, creation from nothingness, but a recombination, a reconfiguration of what is already there, a way, new ways of organizing information so that we can actually discover more information in the future. Can we actually predict creativity? Can we predict what new ideas will emerge? Or if we had this capacity, creativity would actually disappear. Creativity is, of course, intimately related with the idea of freedom. Creativity is a synonym for freedom, in a sense, for novelty. So if everything could be predicted, would this creative freedom remain. There is in any case always a creative tension, I think, between what can be predicted, what, what can be rationally subjected to an algorithm, and what cannot, between order and chaos, between the possibility of strictly defining a system and the impossibility, impossibility of doing so, which leaves some spaces of freedom. And in this creative tension, which I think has many ramifications in uh, education, in, in, in our daily lives, I mean, a creative tension between order and chaos, between rationality and creativity. I'm not saying that creativity is chaos. I'm just saying that it is obviously a more, uh, a, a, a less ordered system in which there are more possibilities, more degrees of freedom. This creative tension I think it's very fruitful for the evolution of humanity and for the development of human thinking, but with the progress in artificial intelligence, with the development of new technologies, will order, rationality, algorithm conquer, completely conquer, this uncontrolled dimension of creativity and novelty? Well, this is a question which obviously I cannot answer. Thank you very much.